peace, the blessings will come and they'll overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord. So notice your personal blessings from God is linked to your personal obedience to him and his words. Your personal blessings from God is linked to your personal obedience to him and his word. I think one of the prophets was Samuel, told a leader, to obey is better than sacrifice. Learn the art of obedience. Jesus learned obedience by the things he suffered. So we must learn the art of obeying God. And blessings will come and they will overtake us. You know, when we learn the art of obedience, we will leave blessings behind for our children. That is what Abraham did, you know. Abraham entered into a covenant with God and he had obeyed God. And because of his obedience, God bless the children of Israel and will continue to bless them until Jesus comes in his second coming in regard to what they have done and I know about the confusion who really are the children of Israel let God and time deal with that John 15 verse 7 the Lord Jesus Christ said, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. What a promise. What a promise. If you stay in me and if you stay in my word, you'll have the privilege to ask what you desire. And it shall be done. You know, use your own mind. Your own common sense. If God truly is our father. If God truly is our God. What kind of father you think God is? What kind of. God, you think he is, that he will not bless his children? And yet there are people that are trying to blow our minds about his blessings. But if you are a reader of the word of God, in regard to what they have said and what they are saying, they will never be able to blow your mind. Truly, the Lord has designed blessings for his people. From the very inception of his relationship with man, because he for man. What he did in Genesis, he pronounced blessings upon them. So let's not believe this foolishness. Of people who think that they have the ability to talk to us and tell us how we shall live as Christians. This has already told us. He says, All these blessings, because I notice that they're really, really coming against the church of Jesus Christ. And I hear that quite down in the 70s when I got saved, Pastor Hunt used to say, there are some things that will come out from the Dead Sea Scrolls. Scrolls, eh? 
There are a lot of scrolls that they have found. He says they will blow some Christian minds. So don't believe everything you hear on Facebook and Facebook. Read your Bible. God truly has designed blessings for his people. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16 and 17. Let the words of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with grace or spiritual blessings in your heart to the Lord. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Let me give you a secret. Learn as a child of God, whatever you are doing, do it to please him. And let me give you young ministers a secret. Whatever you're doing in your ministry, do it to please God. Not your religion. Not your denomination. And you'll learn that from Jesus Christ if you study his life. I'm about my father's business. This is what Peter said. Whatever you are doing, make sure that you are doing it to please God. And God, the Holy Spirit, will never lead you to do anything wrong. Because Jesus says when he come, he shall lead you or guide you into all truth. And he shall not speak of himself, but he shall glorify me and he shall take from me and give it unto you. This is the essence of Christian living. Make sure that you know God. Make sure that you are living a life that is pleasing in the sight of God. And when you have done that, you can truly say that I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. Because the Father looks down from heaven and he says, this is my beloved son. Hear him. Listen to him. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Make sure that the life you are living is pleasing to God. Make sure you do that. You know, sometimes as a human being, and you might call it your rights, and to some extent, it is your right. But I think as humans, we must use these rights rightfully. Because sometimes you can please yourself before you please God. You can please yourself before you do the right thing. Always choose to please God. And you have to speak to yourself. To, eh? You have to tell you if your name is Bawi, whatever your name is, tell yourself. I am not stupid. Because sometime in pleasing God, you seem like you are very stupid. Because eh? most people please themselves. And if you decide to please God, you look like the odd one. 
Don't be afraid to please God. Next. God will always work on your behalf. If you seek the kingdom of God first, God will always work on your behalf. Always. First Chronicles 28 verse 9 and 10. Hear what King David said to Solomon, his son, rather. And you, my son, Solomon, learn to know your father's God. Serve the Lord wholeheartedly and willingly because he searches every heart and understands every thought we have. Now this, this really scare us. That God searches the heart or the spirit. And he knows our thoughts. The psalmist says he knows my thoughts afar off. So therefore, because of these facts, I always have to. At all times, be very careful of my own thought life. As a child of God, you always have to be careful of your own thought life. Why? Because God sees your thoughts afar off. And God searches the heart. That's why God has handpicked some of us. Because he knows your thoughts. He knows who you are. And one of the things I, I have found out in scriptures Whenever God is looking for a man or woman, he handpicks them. There is no system in God's operation where God gives people the power to elect anybody for him. I challenge anybody here. Look in your Bible. You'll never find that in your Bible. Not one time God has done that. Why? Because God knows the heart. If God used to give us the power to elect, we would have been in real, real trouble. That's why most of the nations are in trouble. Because they have the power to elect. Right now it's Biden and Trump. They have the power. But God does not work, so I don't care how much you could talk about democracy. The government of the people, by the people, for the people. God does not have that in his system, in his kingdom. And I'll come with some deep revelation when I come to the place where I will speak on the structure and operation of his kingdom. Because God knows the thought. Every leader in the Old and New Testament was elected by God. One time God allowed Israel to have her way when she said, we want a king. And those people choose the most selfish and wicked king. By the name of Saul. And the Bible says God give him. And by his anger he took him away. But there are some things that the church need to clear up. 
as we live in this 24 centuries. And I call these things some lies. I'm not, and I am not afraid to talk about these lies. So note, he told Solomon to dedicate his life. Oh God. And he told Solomon that God has the power to abandon him. And he says, he will reject you from there on. God has the and and we have and we have seen in our lifetime here. Well, let's see how God rejects some of us leaders. And when God rejects you, God does literally turn his back upon you. You could keep on function. And if you really get God mad, he doesn't just reject you, you know. He just take you away from the earth. He just take you out. And when God is ready to take someone out, they can have no defense, Pastor. No defense whatsoever. No defense. And God is about to take some world leaders out. God is about to take out some leaders in his church. Not too long I was praying. The Spirit of the Lord revealed to me a market down. I just mark down thing. That, that is why I just be so forceful when I say things. Because when God speaks to me, I just mark down things. Because I learned that from the scripture. Whenever God speaks to you, mark it down. Write it down. Why? You will know if it was God or God win. God told me, he said, son, I dealt with the world leaders and I shook up the world. He says, 2025. That is next year. I am dealing with the leaders in my kingdom, in my church. I'm going to shake up my church. I will deal with the leaders first. And God is a plain God. You know. He says, son, set your house in order. And I'm telling you, set your house in order as a child of God. Set your house in order as a minister of the Lord Jesus Christ. Set your house in order in your ministry. For 2025, God is going to shake up the church. He will deal with the church. Because the global harvest and the global revival must take place. And we cannot have global harvest in this condition. We cannot have global revival in this condition. Because the Spirit of God is the one that will bring the global revival. That will bring the global harvest. It's not by might, nor by power, but by my Spirit, says the Lord of hosts. It is only the Spirit of God that can bring the church into the place that she ought to be at this moment of time. Because all the revival and the move of God that took place from after the death of Christ and the birth of the early church was by the Spirit of God. Not a man did it. It was by the Spirit of God. 
And this one will be by the Spirit of God. And no one can restrain the hand of God. No one can dictate what God wants to do. What he wants to do, he always takes the right and do it. He will have it done. It is still not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit sees the Lord of hosts. So God help us. He told his son to be careful. So he said, so he told him to be careful because the Lord has chosen you to build the temple. And God has chosen us in this generation to build his church. You know, it's a privilege to live in this time. God has chosen us to be his people in this time. And because of that, we have to be conscious of this privilege that we have to be God's end time people. Always remember that you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a special people to what? Show forth the light and the glory of God. Always have that first and foremost in your mind. And we as a church here We'll always have that first and foremost in our minds that we are chosen by God. Second Chronicles chapter 16 verse 9, it says, the eyes, the Lord's eyes Scan this translation says. I think the King James says, "See, the Lord eyes scanned the whole world to find those whose hearts are committed to Him and to strengthen them." Oh my God! And in this chapter. The prophet told a king that you were very foolish. You have acted foolishly in this matter. And a lot of Christians are acting foolishly. Let, let us act wisely. Especially in these times, it's all kind of craziness going on, you know. But we must act wisely. We must not do like this king. And then the prophet told him, from now on you will act, you will have wars. Why? Because you have acted foolishly. And many Christians are fighting battles that they do not need to fight. The battle is what? The Lord's. If I hold my peace, the Lord will fight for me. We have to learn the art of trusting God. Is anyone here your sick in body? And you need special prayer. And I don't care what you're going through right now. We are in agreement. And I'm going to pray and I'm, I'm going to ask the Lord 
to intervene. Father, we bow in your divine presence. And we all have needs and are going through challenges. We all have some kind of battle that we are facing right now. And in the mighty name of Jesus, we cast every care upon you. Because you told us that in your word. Casting all your cares upon me, for I care for you. Lord, we cast every care. Let it go right now by faith. Simple faith believing. Cast all your cares. Even you that are on the social media, cast all your cares upon him. Oh my God, in the name of Jesus, we release these cares, these concerns of our lives, in our bodies, in our marriages, in our finances, in the circumstances that we are facing right now. We cast them down at your feet. And we thank you for taking them. Lift your hands and just start to thank God. Because he said, when you pray, believe. Lift your hands and thank him. Father, we thank you. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We thank you for taking these burdens. Thank him. Thank him for taking the burdens. Thank him for taking the care. Let it go in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. And may the peace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit engulf your entire being and your entire family in Jesus name